Hello everyone and welcome back to Russell Movie Reviews, the show where I review stuff that's supposed to be pretty good and maybe one of the best movies of all time, or a film that absolutely sucks and should remain in the depths of hell. Now, welcome to the first out of two reviews uh, that I will be doing on historical films before the end of the season. And the first one I will be discussing is Captain Phillips, released in 2013. Well, in October 2013, to be exact. Um, now, my history with this film is, um, really, I've seen it since its initial release. Um, you know, uh, you know, I used to, wa like, this was one of my grandpa's favorite films, um, before he, uh, unfortunately did pass away a few years ago, and whenever this came on, on the TV, he and I would just watch this film. Like, no matter what ha what was going on, we would always watch this film. Um, and I didn't know this at the time, but maybe he watched this film because it's very, very historically accurate. Um, but, um, I will discuss those uh, historical f events uh, during the course of the film, but suffice to say that this is a very accurate film but again i'll discuss that later on in this review but anyway let's get on to the main point so this one had a budget of 55 million dollars uh domestically it made 100 over 107 million and worldwide it made over 218 million so this was a massive success and uh this was directed by paul greengrass um now i haven't heard of his work before um so, initially, hearing that this, like, it was this guy who directed it, I was like, oh, if I watch, if I go back and watch this film, is it gonna, you know, overly suck, or is it gonna be, um, you know, like a, a fun watch? Um, it certainly was not, you know, I didn't hate this film, but, again, I will get to my points later on. Um... So, like I said, this is a historic, uh, this is a historic film, um, that concerns about the hijacking of the Maersk, Alabama, uh, back in 2009, um, and, uh, there's nothing really else to say about it, because, grandly, it's a very, you know, like I said, it's a very historically accurate film that, um, you know, really, there's nothing really else to talk about. Um, except for, you know, how the cast members, you know, act out and if their personalities were like their real life counterparts and was the film entirely historically accurate. Um,. Um, and I would, um, I would say that, like, if you're wanting to get into historical films and you want to watch one that basically is at least 90% historically, in, uh, like, uh, accurate, um, I say watch this film. It really, like, I mean, again, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. You know, if you just want to watch an historical film that's mostly accurate, then there you go. Watch this film. But, um, I guess to go over the plot, which, again, like I said, is the the hijacking of the Maersk, Alabama. But to go more into depth about it, uh, in April 2009, the U.S. cargo uh, container ship, the Maersk, Alabama sails towards its destination on a day that seems like n any other suddenly somali pirates race toward the vessel climb aboard and take everyone hostage the captain of the ship richard phillips played by the fantastic tom hanks looks to protect his crew from the hostile invaders and their leader moose played by bahar abadi uh so sorry if i butchered that name i most likely did the pirates are after millions of dollars and Phillips must use his wits 
to make sure everyone survives and returns home safely. Um, now that seems like a very, how should I say it, a very Hollywoodized version of the story, uh, which I will get more onto why that is later on in this review. Um, but to, um, I guess go over the cast members, uh, we obviously have Tom Hanks, um, as, uh, Captain Richard Phillips, now I, honestly I really think that anything that Tom, uh, Tom Hanks does is great, like, he never really does a bad performance, it's like, the worst thing he can do is go, is do an okay performance, and so far, I have not found that in any of the movies that I've seen him in. And here he pulls off another fantastic performance. Um, we have uh, um, Michael uh, Shanus. Um, sorry if I butchered that name. As uh, Shane Murphy. Uh, he does fine with the performance he's given. Or with the uh, script that he's given. Uh, Chris McCulkey as... Uh, John Cronin, as uh, he does fine. Uh, we have Corey Johnson as uh, Ken Quinn. Uh, we have David. Oh God, I'm gonna butcher this one. Warshawski. I'm sorry, I butchered that name. Uh, he plays Mike Perry. Uh, all of them do fine with their performances. Um, we have uh, Max. Uh, Martini as the SEAL commander. Uh, he does, again, fine. Uh, we have Yo Vasquez as uh, Captain Frank Costello. Or. I'm gonna try and look up how you pronounce that name because I do not want to butcher that. So, anyways, uh, he plays uh, Frank Costellano, and I think he does fine. Uh, and then we have the um, Somalian crew who, for the sake of not offending them in any way, if they ever watch this review, um, I'm just gonna pr I'm just gonna state their names. Um, well, I I'll just refer to them as the Somalian crew because honestly, I don't want to offend anyone by butchering their names um so uh the only one that i will be referring to as um like uh, by their name is the captain who is muse so yeah um but yeah i think they all do fine um and so yeah um so, I guess to go over the film itself, uh, since it is a historical film, um, I will have to go, um, like I did with the Bohemian Rhapsody review, I will go over the whole, f most of the film uh, in its entirety and discuss any inaccuracies that I do find. And if you guys are, um, if you guys want to go or want the more into depth, uh, details about them there will be a link in the description below for the history buffs uh video on captain phillips like i did with the bohemian rhapsody review i had a link down or two links down below for the two parts that they did on the on the film itself so huge thanks to uh history buffs for helping me get this information um so uh like i said if you guys want more information about the details i'll go over Make sure to hit that link down below and go and check out the video after this one. So, yeah. Um, anyways, um, uh, let's go over the film itself. So, um, the uh, to start off with the beginning of the film, uh, I guess. Um, around 2009, um, people, the... the uh, cruise like well, not cruise liners. Oh, but uh, ship companies uh initially were like like uh they didn't really believe in 
Somalian attacks, so they, uh, they dumb down on the security of the ships, which we do see in the film, uh, accurately portrayed as, uh, the pirate cages aren't locked, and the, I believe the, uh, the, the door to the engine room, uh, was not locked, and I think a couple of other things. But uh, once they set sail, uh, Captain Phillips made sure to, you know, lock, you know, all the pirate cages, lock the engine room and stuff like that. Uh, and the reason why was because of that. So, one point um, to the film for being historically accurate. Um, then, um, um, he, uh, the next point is that he's... He got emails about, or the character in the film uh, starts getting emails saying that, like, do not go around uh, Somalia because, uh, you know, Somalian pirates will come and attack him, blah, 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 blah. So, um, that, that is true that he, that Phillips did get emails about, uh, not, do not go too far into, uh, Somalian territory or else they're gonna come and invade. Um, but, um, um, but yeah, so, um, the next day he orders the crew to do a pirate invasion drill, um, and everything goes very smoothly, you know, the, the crew are doing their assigned task, but then, uh, Captain Fellows notes, uh, notices two blips on the, um, on the radar, uh, which turns out to be uh, pirates, you know, Somalian pirates, uh, and they're like little skiffs. Um, in the film, it's shown to be two blips, but in real life, there were three. So that's one. Uh, that's one inaccuracy. But I can easily look over that one. Um, uh, and then uh, Phillips uh, calls Shane Murphy to the bridge, and um, uh, he looks through his binoculars, and that's when he sees it. it's like, oh shit, it's like the pirates. So he calls the maritime, somebody, I forgot what it's called, uh, but he tries to call like the U.S. Uh, Navy, uh, Marine thing. They don't get a response from there, so they call the U.K. one, and they get a response. And the, res and the response that you hear from the woman in the film is basically exactly what she, uh, the, uh, the woman told Phillips in real life what to do. Which was basically what he was already doing. Which was basically just like locking down and then uh, turn on the higher f uh, fire hoses. Um, but the, the remark she said about them just being fishermen is probably not true uh only by the fact that by 2009 um there was i think at least uh, there was uh a, quite a few some um pirate attacks in 2009 alone so i don't know uh, like i don't know why sh um they thought of putting that in but again that's a tiny little like um over like that's a tiny little inaccuracy that I can look over but basically that's mostly true so again another point to the film um uh they um I think Phillips um um Phillips then decides that um he then makes a fake call wait, he actually does, I think this is actually true, that he, he made a call, uh, where, like, he, he made a call over the radio that basically, and he made it sound like he was talking to the naval, like, the, the Navy service, like, he, he, like, covered his mouth and kind of changed the tone of his voice to kind of sound like a different person, and made it so that, like, he was talking to a Navy SEAL or, like, a person at the Navy, saying, like, uh, like, talking to them, like, we have, you know, we have skiffs coming along that possibly might be pirates and blah 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 blah, and uh, made it so that the guys quote unquote said that there's uh, aerial uh, aerial assault 
you know, like shortly arriving, and it seemed it seemed to work because one of the the little skips uh, you see, like, pull off, but there was still one going. So uh, he decides to you know use the one advantage that the ship has, and that it's it's massive engine. So he makes it makes them turn on like crank it up to a hundred, um, and makes it. Um, calls up to do evasive maneuvers and basically it makes waves for the like these giant waves for the skiff and they just hits them over and over again until finally it's like okay fuck this and they uh, drive away um, and then they have a little meeting in the I think it's in the the dining room or the, the in like a lodge area and I think the conversation that they have that Phillips has with his crew is true um like is is uh, historically accurate um the next day um um the next day he notices uh another blip pop up uh in the film it's shown to be the second pirate attack but in reality there were th Three, I believe. Uh, yeah, it, there were three pirate attacks. Um, it seems like they condensed it down to two, strictly for time, and I can understand why. Because this film is, if I look at this real quick, it doesn't even say on here. Mm, no. Okay, so basically, this film is like. Actually, I can look this up on my phone right now. Like, this film is somewhat... Let me check. Yeah, two hours and 14 minutes. So, adding... Like, having the three pirate attacks, along with everything else that's in the film, that's at least... Like, I think at least, like, two hours. Or, like, at least, like, two hours and 30 minutes. So, and people usually don't want to stay up for that long. Or they, they, they don't want to watch that film for that long, so... Condensing it down to two, only two pirate attacks, I can understand that, and I applaud the... Like, I, I, it's, like, again, one of those things where I can look it over, like, look over that, because it's like, okay, that makes sense. Um, again, uh, Phillips crank, uh, ordered them to crank up the engine and order evasive maneuvers, uh, but apparently this, this time it wasn't affecting them, and they start firing on the bridge. Um, which is like, okay, turn on the fire hoses, let me start shooting flares at them. Uh, but when they're getting, uh, shot up at the flares and they're s swerving around, they notice a small, undefended section of the ship, and so they bring their little skiff along the side and get out their huge ladders, and they climb up aboard the ship. And, you know, at that point, there's like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do now. And so, Phillips makes a call, and tells the rest of the crew that they have just been boarded by pirates uh i think shane murphy i know it was shane murphy and mike perry um and i think john cronin along with the rest of the crew remained or uh, went to the engine room while uh phillips and a few other crew members stayed up on the bridge um and then finally, the the uh, the smaller crew came up to the bridge, and I guess to insert my fun fact here, because uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that at the end of this video, because this video might be pretty long, because again, it's a historical film. But um, uh, the line that the that Moose says uh, about like like look at me, I'm the captain now, that was ad libbed by um, the actor. Who played him? So, um, nice job. I think that's actually pretty. That's actually pretty clever. Um, but yeah, basically, um, the uh, the captain asks like, what kind of ship? Where they? Where is it from? And Phillips is American. And the crew thinks like, oh, we struck. They didn't. They don't actually speak in English. But they basically are like, we struck gold. Like we got an American ship. Uh, but then they realize that the ship is uh. Because before the uh, the crew came up, uh, the the pirates came up to the bridge. Phillips ordered the crew to lock the steering for the ship. Uh, so when they were trying to move it, 
they can't move it because it's locked. So, and Phil, I think the crew on the bridge lie about the the engine had uh, mount or uh, had uh, broken down during the chase. So, um, uh, so yeah, and then um, I think. Um, uh, and then they, uh, the pirates leave a, uh, lead a search party to look for the rest of the crew. Now, unlike the film, Phillips didn't lead the crew, whether he didn't lead the pirates on the, uh, on the, uh, on the search. He, I believe he remained either on the ship or kept eye on them. But it is true that he did try and distract them for, um, he, like, he did try and, like, uh, distract him whenever he could. And the scene where he finds Shane Murphy in one of the rooms, uh, well, not him, but Shane Murphy, like, hiding in one of the rooms is true. Uh, but it isn't true that he, like, once the pirates left, it isn't true that he called up the rest of the crew and, um, and told them to lay a trap. For one of the pirates, because he's uh, one of the pirate, uh, one of the pirates is barefooted, or was barefooted. So he, but that did not happen. So the whole part about the, um, the, uh, uh, the pirate, um, uh, cutting his feet on the the broken glass is not true. Um, but I would like to say that basically, um. Besides for one historical inaccuracy, which I'll discuss after I discuss the rest of the film, the rest of the film is all historically, like, accurate. Like, it's all 100% true. There might be slight deviations, which I don't know about, but mostly it's all true from this point on. So, um, uh, after a few, uh, after uh, several hours of, of, of the crew... The rest of the crew is sitting in the engine room, like them being it, it being hot and you know them, you know not being able to you know, like it's you know starting to get hot in a while. They're starting to sweat. Uh, the captain, the Somali captain, comes down, and um, I believe Mike Perry is uh, is uh, sitting in a corner with a knife. And at great risk, like starts uh, fighting with the captain, and the um, the crew manages to capture the captain. Uh, the rest uh, of the pirates, along with Phillips and the rest of the crew, remain on the bridge. When they get a call over the radios uh, from the crew saying that they captured the uh, they captured the the captain, and they want to make a deal, they will release the captain. They want the crew, with Captain, along with Phillips, for and they'll give uh, the pirates the captain along with I believe it's a thirty thousand uh, uh, dollar petty uh, petty cash that was in, kept in a safe box in uh, one of the upper decks, um, and they will let them use a lifeboat to head back to Somalia, uh, and obviously since the um, the, the Somalia crew didn't know how to uh, 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 pilot the uh, lifeboat. Uh, Phillips had to go in there and show them, like, oh, this is what you do. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the crew released the captain, expecting them to give Phillips to them. Uh, the, uh, the pirates break the promise. And release the lifeboat with Phillips still inside it, and head off to Somalia. Once uh, then, the USS Bainbridge is then called to go and assist the uh, the, Al uh, the Alabama to uh, to try and get Phillips back. Um, the uh, I believe the captain, which is Castellano. Is also given, I believe, two days, like two or three days, to um, try and negotiate for Phillips' release, or else the Navy SEALs will come in and they will take charge. Um, and 
there like um two or three days go by nothing is going cr- like right and so the navy seals drop in by a night drop um or actually well before that the when the bainbridge showed up uh they ordered the out uh the Marisk, alabama to uh dive uh, like leave the area with a naval escort you know to I, i'm assuming deliver the um uh, the, deliver the cargo to its destination or head back to America. Uh, but yeah, once the, the the Navy SEALs drop in, they take control, and um, while they're having a um, while like the captain of the um, of the uh, the Bainbridge and the SEAL commander are talking things out. Phillips tried to escape from the pirates by pushing one of them into the water and diving in and trying to swim back to, or trying to swim to the uh, Bainbridge. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the pirates are able to notice him, and once the the crew on the ship, like, once they realize it's Phillips in the water, it was too late, and they, the pirates drag him back into the, um, into the lifeboat, start punching, like, beating the crap out of him. And then blindfold and tie him up so that, because they're gonna execute him. Um, but um, before uh, they decide to wait on that, and the Somali captain decides to go to the Bainbridge to one uh, need uh, needs uh, needs medical attention because he uh, when he's finding Mike Perry, uh, another crew member comes out with a knife and he. He slit uh, the captain's hand open, so he needs medical attention for his hand, but he also wants to discuss the release for Phillips. But um, after all, uh, but the the navy uh, the crew had other ideas, and they have a like uh, they one they secure rent uh, a tow on the lifeboat, and also have um, uh, have. Uh, snipers on the on the back uh, of the the Bainbridge, like waiting to shoot the rest of the crew, or the rest of the pirates. Sorry, and um, uh, the pirates start getting like impatient, and they're about to execute, um, you know, Phillips when they when the commander orders to stop the tow. Uh, the one pirate moves into position, and then. The, the commander says, execute. And then the snipers, you hear the snipers go off, and then blood just goes everywhere in the lifeboat. They were ma- they managed to shoot all the pirates, killing all of them, and save Phillips' life. Um, they rescue, they get Phillips out of the lifeboat, get him onto the Bain Bridge, um, uh, help him with medical stuff, and the movie ends. Uh, well, actually, I believe it, it either shows or it shows real life footage of um, Phillips returning to America with, um, and he's pronounced a hero. Um, now, the final historical inaccuracy that I want to discuss was about that final point about Phillips being regarded as a hero. It wasn't really the case. In fact, Phillips was almost the complete opposite of a hero because several points that showed him, that shows him in the film being heroic and being a hero are probably not what happened. Um, like, uh, well, um, there's one scene when, when the pirates initially board the ship and um, they threaten to shoot. They they take uh, one of the hostages and they threaten to shoot him. Phillips uh, in the film. Phillips Phillips says like, no, 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 no. If you're gonna shoot anyone, shoot me. That is not true. Um, again, I'm not gonna go too into depth about this point because um, it is um, um. It's it's more thoroughly and wa- more, and it's it's explained better by the history buffs video. So again, 
check out the link in the description after you're done watching this uh, video to go and check out that one. But um, it it's not the film's fault that they... I mean, granted, yes, they took that idea of Philip being a hero and they kind of used it to construct this story. But they didn't make that... They didn't, they didn't mold the story around him being a hero. And they, they weren't the first ones to do it. It actually started when the media covered the original story about, you know, him being, um, um, like, the, the actual story about Phelps being captured, um, in the news article, like, the news, uh, at the time, they claimed that they, that Phelps was a hero, not the film. The film only just took that idea and made it into it, like, to, into the film. Um, but, um, it, it's not the film's fault for using that. Yes, it does use that plot, or it does use that idea, but it's, they didn't make that up just for the film. It was a thing even before that. And this was based off not only the, um, uh, it was based off the true events, but it was basically based off of a book that Richard Phillips wrote about his about the events of the of the like of this you know story so and even that like is like i think the the book is actually way uh way more accurate because it's you know written by richard phelps while this one was written by screenwriters but um i was actually surprised about how many historical inaccuracies there were because there weren't that many um especially with the fact they if you uh, you look at behind the scenes footage, you'll realize how thoroughly they were wanting to keep this accurate because they're um, one they f uh, they wanted to film on like an actual ship. They didn't want to film on a set, so they so uh, Maersk actually gave them the Maersk Alexander, which is a, an exact sister ship to the Maersk Alabama them to shoot on for all of the Alabama footage like for and all the shots that take place on the Alabama it's take place it takes place on the um um on the Alexander but besides that they wanted to go uh, they went one step further and got the USS Truxton which is a uh, which was the uh, which was a naval battleship which stood in for the USS uh, uh, Bainbridge for the film, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but I think even then, uh, those two don't really even come close to the fact that the director wanted to use actual Somalians as the pirate crew. They could have used any African actors and then had them wear these, you know, th like wear the clothes and then speak some random native language but no he w the director wanted to go one step further and hired actual somalians which i think is actually you you should give credit to the director for doing that because that's actually pretty sick um so yeah um uh, i already discussed the fun fact but really in terms of favorite scenes um I guess really just the initial, the first confrontation between Phillips and the, the the pirate crew, when they get to the bridge, and like the line like "Look at me, I'm the captain now," like that's such a badass line that um I don't know why, but that's just like like always just like it gives me chills every time I hear it. Um, uh, the score was composed by Henry Jackman. Um. Who you guys remember a couple times from pre uh, previous episodes. Uh, the score, I think, is fine. Um, but as I said um, multiple times before, it's one of those scores where it's, um, it's it works very well with the film. But in terms of um, by itself, it's... Um, not so good so again if you guys want to watch listen to that 
you could try and find it on like iTunes or something like that. But, um, yeah. Um, final thoughts on Captain Phillips. I love this movie. It's probably one of my favorite historical uh, films um, because I've it's one of the first I've ever seen. So um, gotta give the film credit for that. Um, but um, uh, I, I can't overlook its historical inaccuracies. But um, I guess to um, but I can't. Like, there's so few actual historical inaccuracies that I can look over that. So this is one of the better, in terms of actually, um, uh, in terms of, like, how many things it got right in terms of, versus how many things it got wrong. But, um, uh, in terms of a film itself, uh, I think it's still pretty good. So I'm going to give this film an A- minus uh it's a very good film and i it's a very good history it's a very well-made historical film in terms of again how accurate it is so that's why i'm gonna give this film an a minus so um hope you guys enjoyed this review and stay tuned for again hopefully later on today while i'll be discussing uh where i'll be reviewing the final review for season three and that is the untouchables so anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed this review and stay tuned for the review on the untouchables live long and prosper out